Unlike your passive tree, in which there is very much a wrong and a right way to set it up, there's no wrong or right way to set up your endgame atlas tree. You can just focus on any mechanics that you like running. However, this video is not designed to say this is the best way to set up your tree for Abyss, this is the best way to set up for Legion, etc. Because that's obvious, you just take those respective nodes. Rather, I developed five atlas trees based on a person's PoE playstyle. I broke it down into six categories. We're going to ignore category one. Category one is the pvp -er. Um It's exorbitantly rare. Very few people, unfortunately, play PvP in PoE. Category two I call the speedsters or the alk and goers. These players don't want to have to think or plan or necessarily fully juice up a map or a mechanic. Rather, these players want to run content and kill as fast as possible with a little less planning. Sometimes these players play at the end of the day after work or while drinking. And they have the most fun just killing fast, collecting loot fast. So this tree takes advantage of Wrath of Cosmos and Eldritch Gaze to optimize rewards and challenge from the Eldritch Altars. So a person would only have to have a binary choice to select between as you run through map after map very quickly. We also add on strong boxes, harbingers, and rituals for this endgame style. Category 3 are the currency farmers. These types of players do not mind planning, setting up, and etc. to really maximize loot to fall, be it currency, div cards, or rare or uniques. This tree focuses on delirium orbs being applied to maps. Some delirium nodes are not taken, however, which impact the mirrors of delirium. Many of these players uh, will have delirium at all times from the orbs, so nodes like delusions of persecution and compulsive hoarder, those do in fact apply to delirious maps. We also take advantage of Twist of Fate, which randomizes corrupted maps into new maps with new modifiers. You have to be strong enough to risk getting a mod like Fizz Reflect, cannot regenerate life, mana, or energy shield, etc. But the payoff can be huge by using the Val Temple maps, which have an implicit which stays after conversion, of adding 10 Val Vessels to the new random map layout you get. Strong box buffs apply to these Val Vessels. We also optionally try to collect more target maps like Crimson Temple by taking Singular Focus. Finally, Expedition nodes buff up explosive target range and reroll currency drops. Category 4 are the boss killers. These players have the most fun challenging themselves to take on many types of endgame bosses. Nodes are selected to make accessing this easier. These players also may target farm things like Sublime Vision, Forbidden Flesh, other high value jewels that only fall from bosses. This tree is further designed to up Syndicate to get up Katarina easier, as well as to access pure or flawless Breach Lords, and also beyond bosses to get more tainted currency like the high value tainted Divine Teardrops. Category 5 are the crafters. This tree is especially helpful for solo self-found, since you need to access essences, harvest life force, syndicate unveil mods, and juiced up uh, the delve experience as well for access to fossils. However, softcore crafters um, may also be inclined to farm up this type of atlas tree as well. The final category of endgame atlas tree by playstyle I developed utilizes the wandering path node on the tree. This node eliminates the effects of major nodes but doubles the effects of the minor nodes. This tree I set up does not have the unpredictability of Twist of Fate. This strat went to optimize Blights and Legion for massive buffs to their drops. We also hit up Quant nodes to up drops across the board. Finally, it also ups Life Force drop and access to Harvest since Life Force can sell for very good profit as well, which can then be used to fund gear for your build and so on, you know, goes without saying. Links to these five trees are below. Feel free to customize them to your liking.